So I haven't modified the source code yet, but I'm just going to run the binary to get the flavor of what it's doing. So I've attached winbag to the target VM. And the first thing it's doing is it's draining some name pipes. Okay, so now it's telling me to set breakpoints uh, for the recovery thread, basically to see when it enters the vulnerable function and then when it actually loops for each enlistment uh, when it's trying to send a notification. So I go in bag. I have these two breakpoints. So just to show you what this address is about. You can see it's when it's calling TMP set notification resource manager. So I'm gonna enable both breakpoints and continue execution. So I'm hitting enter now. So we can see it hangs. So now the recovery thread is entering the vulnerable function and I'm continuing execution. And now it's gonna actually set a notification for the first enlistment. So if I look at the actual code, we can see it's when it's calling TMP set notification resource manager. And the arguments are the resource manager as first argument and the enlistment in the second argument. And if I look at the signature, the arguments are in RCX and R8. So this is a resource manager. And this will be an enlistment. So if we look at both of them, the resource manager has a cookie valid. And if we look at the valid transaction manager as well. And the enlistment count is 5,000 hex, which corresponds to the value we have in the source code. And we can see the enlistment head is pointing to the linked list. And then for the enlistment, you see it's a valid enlistment and it's in the committed notified state. Okay. So now if we want to skip breakpoints, what we can do is we can use uh, G uh, to go several times. So I'm just going to copy that a bunch of times. And we need that to be more than 32. Okay, so I'm gonna um, look at the actual debugging session. So nothing is printed yet. I'm just gonna disable the breakpoint now. The execution. So, well, obviously it's telling us to block the recovery thread, which we're not gonna do right now because we, we're not doing anything. We haven't coded anything. But if I continue execution, it's basically telling us that it couldn't actually count the notification. It's because the code is not there yet. We need to add the code to count the notification. And then it's telling us to unpatch the recovery thread. Um, so in order to um, get the user to free. Okay, so now we're ready to modify the source code. So there are two functions to actually count the resource manager's notifications. Um, if we look at them, we can see the count notification return the number of queue notification encountered. And what it's going to do is going to set timeout and then it's going to loop over until it actually times out without any notification. Whereas the first one, which is the blocking one, is doing a little bit of additional things. Uh, the first thing it does is it actually gets a notification first 
with an infinite timeout. And so the idea is that we want to make sure we at least get one notification before we consider it's a timeout. And I think it's going to help with debugging because when we're going to be debugging, potentially the thread may just get no notification because we're debugging. And so I think we should use this one. He's taking it as, a, as an argument, the resource manager handle. So we want to read at least 32 announcements notification. So the notified count So while the notified count is less than 32, so we update the notified count to be equal to um, reading some notifications. from the resource manager handle. So the resource manager handle should be in the px vars I'm just gonna add a printf when we actually get some notification. So what we're doing is we loop until we actually reach reading at least 32 notifications. And so we're going to block each time and we're going to increase the notified count. And each time we're going to show how much we read. Then it should actually show how many notifications have been received. Because initially we saw that it was actually showing only zero. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually free the latest touch enlistment and then free all the others. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to actually free them all backwards, starting from the latest touched. So I'm going to need an index. So the latest touch enlistment has this index minus one because that's the number of enlistments because it starts at zero. So it's going to be an index minus one. We want to loop until we reach zero in the first iteration, but then in the following iteration, it needs to be take into account the actual uh, delta, so it needs to be i. So in the first iteration, notified count will be, for instance, 10. 
on 32 and then L index will be 32. So it will start from 31, index 31 until 0. So that, that works. And then we just need to decrease. Okay, so what we need is we need to get the enlistment from the actual array. So it's going to be in px bar. So it's UAF list. And then it's going to be P entries, which is an array. And we need the index i. And then we need to take the actual handle. So here we're going to store that into variable. So let's touch in this one. Okay, so now that we've got the latest touch enlistment, we're going to actually commit complete this enlistment and then close the handle. Commit complete. So, close this handle. And finally, we need to close the handle. So I'm just going to add a little bit of output just to make it clearer what's going to happen in the debugger. So I'm going to do if I equal the first iteration and do a printer. And then, otherwise, I'm just going to print the list. So the first iteration is going to call printf and it's going to actually print free enlistment at index and then I'm going to actually add just to get some output that we're freeing the right stuff. Okay, let's try that code. Okay, so I'm just going to rerun the binary. Is training some name pipes. Okay, so now we can enable the breakpoints. Continue execution. Now we're gonna continue execution. You can see it hangs as can see we enter the variable function and now we're hitting the code that's going to send the notification 
So now I'm gonna use the the break the the command to actually skip it many times. A few moments later. Okay, so now we have touched many enlistments. So what we want to do is we want to actually um, patch the actual code so it doesn't continue and it's just stuck after it's handled that specific enlistment. And so when I continue execution now, we see that it's actually reaching this code and then it's patching the mutex. So now it's stuck. Like the actual recovery thread is stuck in just after sending the notification. So it's setting up to make sure we actually block the recovery thread, which we've just done. So now we can continue execution. Okay, so it's telling us it counted 56 enlistments thanks to our go command that we touched many enlistments. We started index 55. Okay, so that's good. And now our latest enlistment should be freed because we freed not only this one, but also many others, more than 32. So it should be freed, not in the delayed free list anymore. So now we can unblock the recovery thread and we can analyze a few instructions after, for instance, this address. So if we look at this address, we're going to set the breakpoints. And if we look at the address we had before, that's 23A. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpatch. And then let it run and see what happens. Okay, so now if we go back here, we see that it's telling us, okay, did it work? So let's go back to the debugger, see where we are. So this call has returned and we are now here, so on this CMP. So it's testing the resource manager state. Okay, so we're gonna step slowly and see what happens. So this is our key resource manager, as expected. So now it's testing the B enlistment is finalized. So obviously it's zero because we won the race, we triggered that we won the race. So the flag is not set, so that's good. So it's gonna continue. And then here it's actually handling our P enlistment shifted next to MRM flink. So if you look at RDI, Ah, nice. Ah, great. It worked. So basically, it's it's actually handling an enlistment, but you can see it's been replaced by a name pipe chunk. So if you look at that chunk, it's all controlled data. And if we look for RDI, it's pointing to data we control. So basically, where it is right now, it's going to dereference RDI. It's going to get 41, 41, 41 in RDI, and then it's going to save that. Okay. So now RDI 
is our controlled pointer and it's going to save that into p and it's been shifted which is a local variable and now it's going to loop again from the beginning of this loop and now it's testing if rdi is equal to the head of the list which obviously it's not And look, we are back to the beginning of the loop. Here it's actually retrieving RDI. It's using RDI and it's actually getting the beginning of the announcement from RDI by subtracting 88. So now at 14 is supposed to be the beginning of the announcement, but it's all wrong. And now it's going to actually try to retrieve the flag of the announcement or maybe it's going to pass the enlistment to up reference object. And now it's going to crash because R14 plus AC is an invalid pointer. Boom. We did it.